Warning. Warning. Hi, I'm Chuck Marfione, and I'm a classical guitar maker. I also make uh, period-style romantic guitars here in this nice little compact shop. Uh, sitting here in North Carolina uh, on a hilltop looking at mountains, which you can't see at the moment. But in any event, let me show you around what we have in here. And, uh, you know, we can start by uh, just, you know, taking a look at all the different machines that are in the shop. Uh, you know, we're, you know, very uh, Laguna-centric, so to speak, here in the shop. Uh, uh, almost all the power tools are uh, Laguna, Laguna tools, and I love them. They're great tools. They've been very helpful. You know, we first we've got a 14-inch uh, bandsaw, and we also have a 10-inch uh, a fusion uh, table saw. And over here we've got a combo planer joiner, uh, 10 inch, which is more than adequate for the type of work that I do. If I was a furniture maker, I would probably want something a little bit uh, bigger than this. And over here is the CNC machine, which is my pride and joy. Uh, do a lot of work on this and uh, continuing to do more and uh, you know a little bit later on in this presentation we'll uh, show you uh, you know how it works and what we do on it. Well there are a number of different approaches to building guitars you know some builders you know need to, to, to build by hand because they feel it's important for them to be in touch with the wood in order for them to build the, the really great guitar. You know, other builders, they tend to focus more on machineries and, and automation uh, because they're in a more of a, let's say, a production mode. I tend to be in the middle. You know, I like to take advantage of all of the technology, but at the same time, I also, I too want to be in touch with, the, with, with, with my guitars, and that does occur when you're building by hand. So uh, it's been a healthy marriage between the technology and the tradition, and I'm very comfortable in that particular uh, position. I'm using two really fine software packages uh, to model and also to put together all the machine operations uh, for my projects. I use a, a Rhino, a Rhino CAD uh, for all of my modeling. Uh, it has a fairly steep learning curve, but yet at the same time it's extremely powerful and once you really learn uh, your way around it, um, it's a great tool. You know, for, uh, for my uh, machine operations, I'm using Rhino Cam, which is uh, uh, produced by a company called Mexoft. And again, it's another one with a, not as steep a learning curve as Rhino, but it, it does take some time to get used to it, but very flexible. And the service and support from, uh, from uh, the Mexoff people, as well as the Rhino or McNeil folks, is really solid. Today we're going to look at how I create a guitar neck on the CNC machine. The CNC machine is an important part of my uh, overall build process and what I've had to do is develop a number of different hold down methodologies to safely uh, you know, keep these parts in place during the machining processes. The majority of the work I'm doing is uh, held in place with uh, vacuum systems as opposed to either double sided tape or um, uh, mechanical clamps. I find this to be a very safe and effective way to do this uh, and you know it really uh, you know makes a lot of sense because essentially I don't have to worry about the tool dodging around you know, of physical clamps which is uh, you know really something to be concerned about. So what we have here is the table uh, which is the stock table that comes with an IQ and I've removed some of the some of the spoil boards which were a stock item and then what I started to do is uh, uh, actually make a whole bunch of, of positioning uh, holes here in the table which I worked out uh, with my uh, with my CAD program and these will make a lot more sense as we get into the uh, explanations of uh, some of the different hold down jigs I use but you know these are all predetermined and very accurately uh, you know actually bored into the table and then uh, 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 what I do is I use uh, threaded inserts 
This gives me really great registration and the repeatability uh, of, of you know my ability to re to be able to repeat these processes time and time again has been you know just really phenomenal. This is the primary jig that I use to machine out the Lakote necks for my guitars. So I'm just, just lining this up with these uh, pre-drilled holes with the threaded inserts and what I'm going to do is uh, uh, you know, uh, bolt this down with some stainless steel bolts. Now I don't tighten these all the way down yet, I want to get them you know, kind of finger tight and then I'll do my final adjustments so that this has very little if any, well I shouldn't have any uh, bow or warp in it when I finally tighten it down totally. I'm going to remove this piece, this is a vestige from an earlier process so we no longer need it. So I'm going to insert these little 1 8 inch pins which are readily available even at a Service Star hardware store into these two little index holes. And what it's going to do is going to match up with these two index holes on my neck blank. So all we need to do is just line these up. And that's always the fun part is just lining these, thing, these two holes up. So now it's there. As you can see, it just lifts up. There's nothing holding this down. We're going to turn on some vacuum, and now we're going to have this thing ready to go and to hold down for a machining process. We've got this tube which is running out to a vacuum pump, and I've got a small shutoff valve here which allows me to take and to control when the vacuum is active and when it's not. And what I'll do is I'll just turn this on here and just give this a tap. And now what I've got is this piece is being held down here nice and firm but with just this little bit of vacuum. Right, this is the first step in preparing a neck for machining on the CNC machine. What we need to do is uh, uh, put in a number of reference, uh, reference holes or index holes so that we can position the part consistently throughout the entire machining process. So what I'm going to be doing right now is just setting up the bit, uh, you know, doing a tool touch off here so that the, that, the, that the machine knows exactly where the top of the part is. And then we're going to start running some little routines uh, in here to, to complete uh, putting all the indexing in uh, for, this, uh, for this part. The, uh, th this particular IQ is uh, controlled with a, uh, a small handheld controller and this allows me to uh, instruct the machine to perform certain uh, pro processes, uh, machining processes. So what we're going to do again, as I had mentioned earlier, is we're going to put a couple more indexing holes in here. These particular slots will be used to uh, position the neck uh, during the, the headstock gluing stage. As you can see I've already put in a couple of other holes which are the actual index holes which are used to hold the neck in place on the jig uh, for the actual shaft machining as well. I'm going to take about uh, three or four millimeters off of this blank here just so it's a little bit easier to, uh, to actually do the final skim cut to get my thickness for these neck blanks.
So I'm getting prepared to do the first of the real machining processes, uh, which is we're going to fly cut the top of this for, uh, to, to get a, a, a final thickness for the blank. Normally I wouldn't run this without a dust shroud on it, but uh, if we had the shroud on you really wouldn't be able to see what's happening. So just for instructional purposes we're, uh, we're keeping the, 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 the shroud off. By the way, just a, a word of caution and it is wear your safety glasses. I almost always wear them, I just happen to forget them, so I'm going to put these on right now for the rest of this process. Now we're ready to profile this piece. Uh, I've changed my bit and we'll uh, let it roll here and uh, then we can uh, see what it looks like. In a, it'll begin to look more like a neck. Right now it just looks like a block of wood. Okay, Lino, that's uh, that's 15,000 RPMs there. 15,000 RPMs. Okay, all right. Um, so it, it sounds like uh, uh, like 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 yeah, you have the controller where you, or you have the machine where you can control the RPMs through the handheld controller. That's great. So, um, yep. So and like I said, uh, this is how you change it uh, when you are not running a file. Okay, so you know on and off, and then Z and plus and Z minus to go up and down. Mm -hmm. Now. When you run a job, let's say you know it's, it's, it's moving and it's cutting and doing everything. If you just hit the Z plus and the Z minus, no on and off, just Z plus and Z minus by themselves, um, that will make the spindle go up and down as well. Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent to know. All right. Um, well, again, Lino, this was a very informative. This will help us uh, make all the appropriate adjustments so we can uh, really zero in on the right uh, feeds and speeds here. Perfect. If you, if you guys want to get any more issues, uh, feel free to give me a call. All right. Have a great day. All right. You guys take care. All right. Bye. Bye now. That's what I love about Laguna. I can just call and I can get answers. Well, it's cutting pretty good here. We've got a nice, we're getting a good profile here. It is starting to look like a neck. All right, get rid of all of this excess material so that we, you know, don't have to really tax the machine as we get into the real detailed type of machining where we're profiling the neck, uh, you know, from a vertical perspective. Okay, the next step here is to create the Marfione V-joint. And this is a V-joint that I've developed uh, for these low-coat guitars to make it a little bit easier to put the, uh, the headstock and the uh, neck shaft together. This is also a series of operations going on here, all at, uh, you know, one right after another, as opposed to actually stopping and, uh, and uh, starting and stopping and starting and stopping and starting. Because I'm using one bit, uh, I can bundle all of these operations together into one continuous uh, flow. We're now moving into the final stage uh, of shaping the neck and uh, essentially we've got the blank, you know, as you can see it's, we've taken off all of the excess material so that this finishing bit will uh, now just be working with a minimal amount of material, you know, in terms of, uh, of actually uh, cutting, uh, you know, cutting. Um, you just don't want to put a lot of stress on these bits even though the machine and the bit will take it. 
This is uh, what we ultimately end up with for a, for a blank. Uh, so uh, we'll walk through all of the steps to, to get to this point. We're good to go here. I'm now going to put the piece onto the uh, fixture here and we'll turn on the vacuum. Just give it a good hit to make sure that we've got a good firm seal. It's on there nicely and we're going to zero out the machine. I've just made a tool change and I've got a tapered bit on here now which is a very fine and what we're going to do next here is further define the, uh, the volute area here. Now there's still a little bit of handwork that needs to be done. As you can see over here, what I've done is I've actually stopped the, the bit just a bit short here so that essentially what we can do is take, and with a, with a real sharp chisel, we'll just take and clean this, this out here. Uh, and as well, what I'll do is I'll come in here and I will just square this up so that when my, with my back plate, of ebony or rosewood is uh, fits on top of this it, it gets a nice tight square fit. Well we're moving on to the headstock right now and one of the first operations that we'll uh, take care of is we're going to fly cut the top of this piece so we can get it down to the appropriate thickness. Now this could be done with a with a, uh, a, a sander but I prefer doing it on the uh, CNC machine just because I can get it so close. We're moving on to the second stage of the creation of the headstock here and what we're going to do with this operation is uh, take, a, you know, take a majority of the material off you know, around the sides of this, uh, of this headstock blank in preparation for final profiling to its finished size. Now that we've removed a majority of the excess material from this headstock, uh, we're going to move on to the next stage, which is to actually do the finish profiling. And uh, as well, we're going to start working on creating the, uh, the, the mortise here.
step here of uh, creating this headstock piece and uh, well, we've made a tool change. We're now using a, a tapered ball mill uh, and the majority of the work here is going to be on the, uh, on the actual uh, m uh, mortise here and around these uh, edges which will then be uh, joined up against the uh, mating edge of the, uh, of the actual neck shaft. So we've now completed the, uh, the headstock piece and we're going to do a, just a preliminary test here to see how well it fits with the, uh, with, with the uh, tenon. We know that we're going to have to do a little bit of light sanding you know, with 400 or 600 sandpaper uh, to do a final fit, but we should be pretty close here. So we're just going to pull this off. And sometimes they don't want to come off. In this case, we've got these pegs here. All right, and I'm just going to take and do a little bit of cleaning here. Now you can see how nice and clean that joint is. And let's give it a test fit and see how well we're doing here. Okay. Okay, so what you can see here is we're going to have to do a little bit of sanding, all right, but yet at the same time, we're pretty darn close. All right, we've moved on to uh, creating the tenon here uh, on, our, on our neck, and you'll notice here that we're using a vertical fixture, and this allows me to machine in a vertical position as opposed to the normal horizontal position of this uh, work surface. Um, you know, this was required because of the fact that I do not have a four-axis machine, and this is a great way to approach this problem or, or challenge more than a problem. Um, so let's get started, and uh, we'll we'll run this and see how it works. defining the back wall of the, of the heel. I have made another tool change and what we're going to do is refine this tenon and the heel of the back uh, heel wall. Uh, with, with these sets of operations here. Right, we've made another tool change. We've put a tapered ball mill on here and what we're going to do is refine this uh, fillet here right at the tip of this tenon. All right, we've made another tool change. We're back to our 2240 3/8 inch ball mill, and we're going to use that to refine even further the back wall of this uh, of this heel. I just want to point out here that what I've done is uh, really defined this uh, this back wall of the of the uh, heel itself and I'm you know, trying to do a little bit of pre-planning here so that essentially 
when we start machining the actual heel out, that uh, I don't have a lot of uh, a potential for tear out uh, from uh, from my bit as it's you know uh, working uh, this uh, the shaping of the heel. So we're going to do this now on the other side, and then we'll move on to uh, the next operation. Right. This is the last operation that we're going to perform in a vertical position. What we're going to do is drill two tenon bolt holes right here in the tenon. All right, we're down to the last stage here of the uh, machining on this neck, and that is what we're going to do at this point is uh, machine out the actual heel. Uh, so there's a couple of different steps to this. We're going to be using a fairly large bit. We're going to be taking a lot of material off, uh, and we're done. Well, we've got a finished neck here. Uh, there is still a little bit of work that will need to be done on it in terms of uh, some fine sanding around here in the uh, transition area. And uh, we do have one more uh, operation to perform on this, and, and that will be to take and, and make the, uh, the uh, horizontal, or I should say, well, it depends on how you're looking at this, uh, the uh, two t tenon holes here for the two, uh, the two uh, barrel nuts that will fit in here, which will hold the bolts, uh, which actually will bolt into the uh, into the uh, heel block. Uh, so why don't I set that up? You take a quick look again. It's nice and uniform, uh, and we've got a successful neck. All right, we've set up the, the uh, fixture for the last operation in this, uh, in this neck uh, of, of production sequence. Uh, and what we've done is uh, put this bracket on our, our basic uh, vacuum table uh, fixture. Now this uh, is capable of, of, of working under vacuum but I prefer to use the clamp only because uh, there's a fair amount of downward pressure here. Uh, and I think just for safety's sake, uh, I, I much prefer just using the clamp.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching the process of me uh, uh, pulling together a neck on the CNC machine. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's quite an experience that, I, that I've had over the, the months and, uh, and actually years uh, trying to you know, really work through a lot of these issues and, uh, and challenges. Uh, one thing I'd like to make, uh, make clear is, is that we're a development shop as much as we are a, uh, a production, and that is a mini production shop. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, uh, you can certainly uh, give me a call or reach me through my website at uh, marfionguitars.com. And if you're interested in learning more about some great tools, then you should really talk to the Laguna folks. They're great folks to work with. Thanks a lot.